So today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a double-sided circuit board. Uh, we start off with this PCB fab in a box kit um, and this uh, laminator. Um, first thing to do is turn the laminator on. Uh, there's a setting here that shows sort of a thin and thick setting. Make sure it's on a thick setting and run it for about half an hour before you start to use it. The next step is to print out your circuit board outline. Um, Make sure that you fill all empty areas with uh, copper, so you have a black fill all the way through. This saves um, some of the etching time and reduces the amount of etching you have to use. Um, what I have here is a top layer. So on the top layer, any text you may have, sorry, it's blurry, any text you may have is going to be inverted so it looks backwards, because remember when we do the transfer, it's on the other side of the copper. And this is the bottom layer. Um, the bottom layer on mine is the chip layer, so these are all individual chips, and make sure that you print the bottom layer mirrored. So bottom layer is mirrored when you print it, top layer is not. So the next step is to cut out the transfer paper. Um, you'll notice there's two sides to the transfer paper. One side is a light blue, and one side is a darker blue. So what we want to do is make sure we're printing on the light blue side here. Um, so what I do here is basically use uh, a metal edge, sharp knife, and a um, little piece of the artificial ice. It's really good to cut on. Um, and basically I'm cutting a strip that's half an inch wider than you print it, and then half an inch longer as well. So what I've done now is laid the cut pieces of paper over top of my printed outline before. I'm just using uh, regular masking tape, like a, a painting masking tape um, and make sure, making sure you cover all the edges because you don't want any of these to catch in the laser printer. Um, push firmly down on the tape uh, to make sure you have a good seal. Um, one thing I did here is just label what the top of the page was. This makes it easier when we feed it into the laser printer that we're just printing the exact same way because what we're trying to do here is just save this expensive blue paper by sort of using this page as a surrogate to carry it through the printer. So we're over at the printer now. Um, this particular printer, the HP LaserDet 3005. Um, lay your top layer so it's facing down and towards you. So it's important before printing to make sure your properties on your printer are set to high quality. Um, Particularly on this particular printer, we have um, print quality, uh, make sure it's at ProRes 1200. So our printhead survived the laser printer. And basically, instead of peeling the tape, which I find will separate the layers um, of this particular paper, instead just use your straight edge, line it up inside the tape, and then slice through being careful not to go through the black toner that you just printed. It just comes out easily like that. So our next step is to cut the copper clad. This is a double-sided copper because I'm making a double-sided board. Um, so you wanna, what you want to do is just line up your printed outline there and just quite cut slightly larger. Some people tell you that you need a half inch, but I think that's really just wasteful of your copper. Um, so I use just a pencil, mark your edges, and the stuff is thin enough that you can just cut it with a heavy pair of scissors. So now we're going to clean our copper clad. Um, this is what I like to use is a fine steel wool and just plain old dish soap. So, a small dab of dish soap in the middle, the water, and then don't go overkill on this, just really lightly on the steel wool. We're not trying to take steel off or <laughs> copper off, we're just uh, trying to get off some of the oxidation and any oils, fingerprints or anything else that's accumulated on the copper. So again, it's just light pressure. I like to go in one direction just for uh, aesthetic purposes, just to keep all my uh, swirl lines in one direction. So 
That's all we really need. Okay, just work the edges a little bit. And then flip over and do our other side. So after the initial wash, take a bit of Tarnix. Make sure you're wearing a pair of gloves, because this is a pretty strong acid. And then, just slightly rub over our clean copper surface. Just to get off any further oxidization. Tarnix, you just rinse with water, cold water, after you've applied. So what I like to use is before we image the, uh, the toner transfer is to use this isopropyl alcohol. This is 99.9%, so it's a bit the pure stuff you can get. And I just use a coffee filter. Um, coffee filter because it's lint free, so you're not going to leave anything behind. Clean any little bits of dust or anything that might have settled on this so it's absolutely as clean as possible for our transfer. When you're handling copper it's important to hold it just by the edges. I even kept my glove on that I, I did the Tarnex with just to, to prevent getting any unnecessary fingerprints on there. So we're finally ready to laminate. Um, make sure you have a Tupperware with cold water on standby. Make sure that your board will fit in it. Which, uh, things like that can happen. So this is our toner transfer. We want to make sure toner transfer side goes down. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered on the board, but just try to get it as close to the middle as you can. Basically when we feed through, it's important to make sure that you feed straight. Don't feed the first edge like that. Make sure you're as perpendicular as possible. Once it grabs, you'll feel it, and then just let it go at its own rate. So naturally, my memory card filled up uh, just as I was filming that. But basically, as soon as the board came out, you reverse it, feed it through again, reverse it, feed it through again, reverse it, feed it through again. So there's four complete passes. Uh, the instructions say do two passes, but I find uh, four passes gave a much better bond of the toner onto the uh, copper. Um, as soon as the last pass comes out, drop your copper into the uh, water solution and then wait a few minutes for the, the paper to separate. Uh, this has been here for quite a while, so you'll see it just slides right off and our toner is underneath on the copper. So after we pull that out of the water, I like to just dry off any extra moisture. So I'll use this heat gun, low setting. If you have a hair dryer, it might be a little more appropriate, but uh, as long as you're careful with the heat gun, don't go too crazy, then uh, it won't burn anything. dry. So just to prepare this board for etching, what I've used is this shelf paper. It's sort of got an adhesive on the back and just sort of waterproof film on this side. This is at the dollar store, all of one dollar, so I recommend getting it there. I just peeled off the backing and then carefully stick the bare copper side, which we don't want to be etched, um, to that adhesive and then just make sure there's no air bubbles there. Use your knife and just trim off any excess along the edge.